Hello, Dolores. Hello there. <laughs> so good to have you today. Really, really exciting. So many people want to hear more of your extraordinary adventures. I want to remind everybody that is watching that you're a true pioneer. You have been doing hypnotherapy for 40 years, over 40 years, past regression life for over 30 years. Before anybody was talking about this, you have been an UFO investigator. You're a counselor, you're a healer, and we're going to speak also about your healing work that is absolutely extraordinary. And you just have received some amazing information from over thousands of people. And I want to discuss that with you and what kind of information you have received by bringing those people to a deep trance. What, what, does, have, what does that have, have revealed to you? Well, I've written 15 books, and I'm working on three more. So I have so much information, I'm going to be writing for a long time, that it just keeps coming. But you see, I've developed a technique of hypnosis that is not like any other method out there. The method that I have found, I've done it myself because when I started 40 years ago, there was none of this being done. So I had to, I guess, invent it as it went along. So I found a way to get the person into the deepest possible level of trance. This is called the synambulistic level. When you're in that level of trance, the conscious mind isn't there. It can't interfere. Most hypnotists work in the light levels of trance where the person remembers everything when they wake up. And they'll say, well, I made the whole thing up. But you remove that conscious mind. The conscious mind is the stupidest part of the human being. It's the part that doesn't know anything, but yet it thinks it does, and it always wants to control everything. But the real knowledge comes from the other part of you. And I have found a way to tap into that. The source of all knowledge is nothing you can't find out once you tap into that part. And that's the part I work with. And I find I can reach it by taking the person into the deepest level, getting the stupid conscious mind out of the way, and then we can get the answers to everything. And that's where the healing occurs also. Extraordinary. So what did that reveal? What, what kind of information goes through when you get at that level? Anything you want to know. Access to anything. Because this part, I call it the greatest source of power there is. There isn't anything higher. It has the answers to everything. It knows everything. And it knows everything about the person that comes in. There are no secrets. So everything that they want to know, as a therapist, you know, everybody has problems. And what they want to know, we can find the answers to, and we can find the cause of the illness. But along the way, when I'm working with these people, also great information comes through. We get metaphysical concepts and theories that I never heard before. That's what I say that I really am is the reporter, the investigator, the researcher of lost knowledge. Because over the years I've found things are coming to me that no one knows or have been forgotten and lost. And that's why I've written so many books about it. It just comes through the people I'm working with. I don't channel, it doesn't come from me. But the people I work with, the information pours out of them. It's something to help them, but also they'll give me information that the world needs to know. And we're getting more and more concepts that in the past we weren't ready for to understand these things. Now we are finally ready to have it. And it's given piece by piece as you can absorb it and understand it. Otherwise it'd be too much, it'd be too overwhelming. Yeah, I like what you said, it's like giving a, a baby a steak. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But the information I've been getting in the last several years, I wouldn't have understood back in the beginning of my work because it wouldn't have made any sense. I would have thrown it all away. So it's always given to you by a little spoonful. If right. you take a step, you digest that piece of information, then you get a little more information. Yeah. And so now it's like 
I keep thinking there's nothing more they can reveal to me, but they keep saying, oh no, you're only at the very beginning. There's lots more we can tell you. So what does what does that uh, uh, allow? I mean, how come this is possible now? Is it because our DNA is changing, our vibration are higher? Is it because we're more open, because we hear this more and more? What allows this? What? How can we better get in tune with really what's out there? Everything is changing. We're living in a very exciting time right now. The vibrations and the frequencies of the Earth itself are changing. And we have to change to go along with it. So it's affecting all of us. And I think this is, we call it the awakening. Things are beginning to open up. We are beginning to understand more and more. And in the beginning, we couldn't have. It's just day-to-day -day things. But not anymore. Everything is moving very fast right now. You probably have noticed time has speeded up. Everything is changing. So we're able to understand these things more. Maybe the Internet has something to do with it, too. Because when I'm traveling everywhere now, they all say, we just discovered you. I said, yeah, I've been around for 40 years, and you're just now finding out about me. My books have been out for over 20 years, so I think the Internet generation is having a lot to do with this. But yes, the DNA is being changed because it has to be. In order for us to move with the Earth itself as it shifts into this new dimension and frequency, the dimensions and frequency of our own body have to change in order to move with it. So with this, we have the opening up uh, to receive and understand more information. Because you don't believe the emails. I get thousands of emails. People, finally, they said, finally it all begins to make sense. It's a very important time we're living in right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and so when, before we get into the new earth and how we can, um, you know, uh, be part of this shift or open up, and, and uh, how, um, can you tell us more about those regressions and uh, what kind of communication y you have when you're in that, uh, are you receiving, I hear are you receiving information from ETs? Well, and I've from, done that. And, and from different dimensions? I'm going to explain what I work with first so you'll understand it. People who read my books understand what I do. But no, I worked 25 years on the UFO and the ET phenomenon. I wrote four books on that. That is a different thing altogether. And I found the answers, every answer you could possibly want to know about the UFO phenomenon. That's a different thing. The part that I work with and this is the part the other hypnotists don't know how to reach. I call it the subconscious, but it's not the subconscious the way it's defined by the psychiatrist. That is the childish part of your mind. That's the part of your mind that the hypnotist uses with habits. Stop smoking, lose weight. The part that I call the subconscious, you may refer to it as the higher self, the older soul, the higher consciousness. It is so big and so huge, it has the answers to everything. It is a great power. I call it the subconscious because I didn't know what else to call it. And they say, we don't care what you call us, we'll work with you. But it contains all information. So all I have to do is come up with the questions, and then we can have the answers to anything. I, it doesn't come through me, it comes through the clients that I'm working with. I was under the impression that when you were doing those past regressions, not just you were tapping in the soul, but you were also being in communication then with ETs that were actually operating on that body or doing some, some, some work. It, it, it happened during those trance, I thought. If we're working on ET cases. Okay. That's the difference because I said 25 years I've worked on ET and UFO cases. Most of the people that come to me have problems. Everybody's got problems. People are complicated. Most of the ones that are coming to see me now have physical problems, diseases, illnesses. They're getting ready to have surgery, and they come from all over the world. And other ones just have family problems, problems with their jobs, and they want answers. That is what we find for them. The ETs are just beings just like you. 
There's nothing special about them. They have evolved to a higher level and know how to use their brains more. But they're just a soul, a spirit living in a body, just like you are. So they're not going to know more than you will. In ET cases, yes, they do do healing and they help. But that's different than the ordinary person that comes in to see me. Yeah. And you see the difference? Yeah. And you're also reporting, though, um, some ET souls, that you're, you're, you're in contact with some ET souls inside of a human body. And you're yeah. saying that there's been a calling, there's been some volunteers coming, and there's more and more you're in contact with those people. Can you tell us about that? That's a different thing than the ETs that are out there doing their work. Yeah. What I'm involved with there, you're talking about the three waves of volunteers. This is what I found in, I found out. See, the most of the people on earth are caught on the wheel of karma. This means that they've been living a life, life after life after life, hundreds of lives on earth, making the same mistakes with the same people and creating karma and not working it out. Those kind of people will not be able to save the earth. They're too caught in their own stuff. So this is where the call went out for volunteers to come and help save the earth. The only way it could happen was to have pure souls come in. Souls that were not contaminated and not caught in the wheel of karma. And never had karma. The only ones that could do that would be those who have never lived on earth before. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. They're not caught up into this. Uh, we call it, they say it's the muck in the mire, it's like being caught on, on fly paper when you come to earth and get caught up into the karma. Mm -hmm. People come in who have never been here before, they're pure souls. Those are the ones who will be able to help the earth. And that's where the volunteers came in. And I've had many, many of these now, instead of going into past lives, they go to lives where they were on spaceships, they were on other planets, they were on other dimensions. Some of them were light beings to where they didn't have to come back. They'd evolved to the point they didn't even need a physical body. That's what you mean by ETs. They were just other beings and other dimensions, other planets and spaceships. They were living their lives. They were happy, but they heard the call, Earth is in trouble. She needs help when you come and volunteer. So some of those have come. Then the other groups that I'm finding, mm -hmm. the souls, are those who have never ever been in any kind of a body at all. They have still with God. They call the source. We all came from the source when we started out on our journey to learn all these lessons. This is a school here to learn lessons. Now some of these have never left the source. Imagine how pure that would be. And you can imagine how much of a traumatic shock that is when they come into this mess that we call Earth. Those are the two groups I'm finding now, what I call the first waves and the second wave. They don't know these things consciously. All they know is when they're here, I don't want to be here. I don't like it here. I don't like what people are doing to each other. I don't understand the violence. They don't understand emotions and emotions affect them to a great degree. They just don't like it. And even though they have, have good families, they have good jobs, they keep saying, I want to go home. I don't know where home is, but I know it's not here. And many of them, especially in the first wave of, people, of volunteers that came, many of them have tried to commit suicide to get out, even though there wasn't any reason for them to do it. Because they just don't understand life on Earth. So they've had a difficult time. The second wave had it a little easier, but they're, they remain more to themselves. And their job is just to generate energy that will affect anybody they come in contact so with. So that's their mission, to generate that energy and raise the frequency? And love. Love is the most important thing. And this will help change the earth. And they said in the beginning they were worried about it, but now they said, We've had hundreds of thousands of people coming who are part of this group. They think now we will be able to save the earth. We will be able to make a difference. 
It's reached the critical mass now where it can turn the tide. And you're beginning to see the things that are happening. But that does say, see how it's different than ET. But however, I heard you saying that um, ETs were actually, um, uh, 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 really are monitoring us, are, are, are watching after us. And, and, and I wanted to ask you actually, are they interfering in this way? I mean, are they at all part of us evolving or are they just observing? They're the ones who created us in the beginning. They were called the archaic ones, the ones who go throughout the universes planting a life on all the planets when the planet is ready to receive life. Now, I've written several books on this about the seeding of the planet Earth. So if they've been taking care of us since the beginning of time, naturally they're going to be watching us and observing our progress and seeing what we're doing. And they're the ones who initiated this volunteer program with the councils because there are councils over solar systems councils over galaxies, councils over universes. There are rules and regulations everything has to go by. And the main one is non-interference. And the, the people of Earth are a creature who has been given free will and they cannot interfere with the free will. But they're observing because they want to see, are we going to get it? They don't want the Earth to be destroyed. They don't want these things to happen. That's why the call went out for the volunteers to come in that maybe they could make a difference and turn it all around. Now, there are programs out there where people have been watched since the beginning they came in. Now I'm finding they're the ones who really came from the other planets, the other, um, the other spaceships and things. Can't you see all they're doing is taking care of their own people? Their people have decided to come to Earth and enter a human body to help and interact. So all they're doing is watching, making sure the people are safe and the body is functioning the way it's supposed to be. There's nothing negative about it at all. Yeah, you, don't, you don't encounter personally negative ones, do you? But they do are out there. I have never encountered a negative ET. 25 years. In the four books I've written about it, I've never found any of them to be negative. The story, I speak at the UFO conferences all over the world. Yeah. And there's always the other investigators that are talking about the negativity and all of this stuff. And I tell them, you're not working at the deep level of trance that I work at. If they have the conscious mind and the emotion and the fear in there, the emotion and the fear distorts the story that they're getting and not getting the true story. I remove that. We go into the subconscious part where the truth is, we get a totally different story. Yeah, you're in the space where love is, there is only love, there is only God. You can't lie and you can't imagine it. The conscious mind is where the fear is. If it doesn't understand something, it's afraid of it. And so the story will not be the accurate story of what happened because it's colored by the emotion. So if I remove that and get to the real story, it's totally different. So that's why I tell the other investigators, I said, they tell me what they, the experiences they've had. I said, I can explain everything you're saying and it's not negative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, in our society, we are caught by karma and fears and, and, and you know, and we are being afraid. I mean, it's coming from governments and it's coming from you know, politicians and leaders that are making us fearful. Uh, yeah. So, so part of our job, you're saying, is is for us to regain our own. I mean, thinking on our own. Yeah. Because this one of the things I've been told with this work is two things you have to do if you're going to move to the new earth. You're going to evolve. You have to get rid of karma because karma serves no purpose. It ties you into this wheel. You have to keep coming back again and again and again with the same people and the same circumstances. Only next time it's even going to be worse than it is now if you don't work it out. So the idea is to get rid of the karma. This means forgiving and letting go. And a lot of people say, I can't forgive that person. You don't know what they did to me. 
But that's still holding on to karma, and it only affects you. So what if your parents treated you horribly when you were growing up? So what if you had a drunken husband who beat you? Let it go. It serves no purpose. What did you learn from the situation? Everything that happens to you in your life is a lesson. And if you learned one thing from it, that was the purpose of it. If people say, well, I didn't learn anything, well, then they're going to have to repeat it again. This is what karma is. Because this is a school. Mm -hmm. It's a school where you can't skip a grade, but you can have to repeat a grade if you don't get it right, don't understand it the first time. And they say, they don't care how long it takes you to learn the lesson in this grade. You have eternity to learn it. But do you want to take eternity working on one little part? Or do you want to move on so you can graduate? That's what it's all about. Everybody has bad things that happen in their life. That's part of the lessons. And I hear it all. I hear people, all the stories that people tell me when they come mm -hmm. to see me. But if you, I tell them, what did you learn from the situation? Many of them don't even look at it that way. If they learn one thing, that was the purpose for the whole thing. So you have to look at what happened to you when you were a child. What did it teach me? Some of the cases I've had where the people were sexually abused as a child, they were beaten every day. When we do the session, it comes up and says, they learned how to survive. They learned how to grow. They learned how to be on their own. So everything, even though it has a negative connotation to it, will have a positive lesson if you look for it. So you have to forgive that person, release them, and let them go. And this doesn't mean you have to do it consciously, because it's hard to do. Yeah. Basically. Also, some of the people that you're having problems with may have already died, and you're still holding on to that. So what is the best way to do that? Is it to, to be in front of the mirror or write a letter or, or just talk out loud? I mean, how can we do it really from a hard, deep level, sincere, authentic, to release well, all that? What's your best uh, technique? I tell people, because you can't do it face to face, it's too hard. Mm -hmm. If you died, you can't do it. So I tell people, get by themselves and do it mentally. Picture the person. You've got to remember that when you came into this life, you signed contracts with people. Mm -hmm. You don't realize it, but this is part of your plan when you come to Earth. You make a plan and you make contracts with different people. This is what we hope to accomplish this time. Well, what I tell them to do is visualize this other person and say to them, we tried, we really tried, it didn't work and see yourself tearing up the contract and throwing it away. Hmm. And when you do that, you say, I forgive you, I release you, I let you go. Hmm. You go your way with love, I'll go my way, we don't have to be connected anymore. And if you do that and you really mean it, they may be out of your life and they won't bother you anymore. If they can't push your buttons, it's just a game. They can't push your buttons anymore. But once you have let it go, then it's their karma. It's not your karma anymore. They have to work it out themselves. But they, that's what I've been told. Tell people to get rid of the karma, forgive and release and let it go. It's, it's hard. I know it's not easy. But this is something you must do if you want to progress onward. Otherwise, you're dragging all this baggage and garbage along with you from lifetime to lifetime. You've got to get rid of it. But then you have to forgive yourself. Yeah. Remember, it takes two people to create any kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. It's hard, too. You don't want to admit you had anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. But once you do that, you do all the releasing, then you'll get rid of the old karma. It can't affect you anymore. And try not to make any more karma because we don't want to drag any more of this into the next life.
So is there a dialogue too, too far, that we could have with our soul about that? Yeah. 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 Okay. I, myself, for anything I might have done, anyone I may have hurt, even though I didn't realize I was hurting them, and I forgive myself. This is very important right now. Then the second thing you have to do is let go of fear. Yes. Because fear is the strongest emotion a human has. You don't understand something, you're afraid of it. Fear is paralyzing. Mm -hmm. As you were saying, the governments, the churches, they are very good at implanting fear into people. That's how they control people. So I tell people, don't buy into the fear. Don't listen to it. If you hear it on TV or if you see it in the newspapers, ask questions about it. Think for yourself. Don't give your power away to anyone. Think for yourself and ask questions. Does this make sense? Or is there something going on behind this? And then you have your own power and you'll be able to figure it out yourself. You see the difference? Yeah. Don't buy into fear. Release fear. All the whole new world we're going into is based on love. Love is the most important emotion there is. That's where it's all going to be. The new world is full of love. If you want to stay with the old world, with all the catastrophes and the things that are happening and the wars and all the violence, then that's your choice. But that's the old world. So you're saying that the, the, there's really a two planets now, the new Earth and the old Earth, and it has started since 2003? That is when I began to notice it happening. It may have been happening more subtly before that, but that is when it became more noticeable. Okay. People keep talking about 2012. Right. That's just eight. That's when everything will reach its culmination. It doesn't mean that anything's going to happen right on that date and bang, everything's going to be different. This is slow and very subtle. And we're in the middle of it right now. It's happening right now. It began about 2003 and it's very gradual. And the people who are in this will begin to notice things are looking a little different. Things are changing. And then they'll realize they are moving into the newer. It's a very complicated theory. I've written about it in my books. But it is two Earths, but the new Earth is going to be moving into another dimension, another frequency. And you have to understand dimensions. There are people now living in other dimensions that we can't see. There are cities, there are planets. We can't see them because they're vibrating at a different frequency. They're invisible to us. So whenever the new Earth moves into that new dimension and frequency, it will become invisible to us. Mm. Ah. But you can't go unless your vibration and frequency matches the Earth as it moves. The Earth is a living being. A lot of people don't realize that, but it is. It's alive. It is getting ready to go into its next incarnation. That's why it's evolving, it's moving on. It doesn't care if the human race goes with it or not. We're really a nuisance to it. Mm -hmm. We're like on a dog. And they just assume we didn't go with it because look what we're doing to the earth. But if you want to go with the new world and not stay with the old world, you have to, your frequency and vibration has to change to match it. And that's happening now, and there's no way you can change it. Will we go maybe back and forth with uh, one and the other? Right now we are. We are already. We're doing it now. And see, your body can't change all at once. The frequency and vibration can't change suddenly. It would be too much for the body, and the body would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It has to happen gradually in steps. And people are already noticing things with their body that are different. Mm -hmm. The physical effects it's having on their body right now, because it does it in stages. It'll be, you'll shift, and it'll, you'll notice something for a few days, and then it'll, it'll straighten out. It may be a month or more before you notice something again. 
Now, now it seems to be getting better, but back about 2003, up until about a year ago, it was very noticeable. People would report things like high blood pressure, heart palpitations, dizziness, depression, joint aches and pains, sometimes nausea. They would last for a few days. Not all of them at once, but these different mm -hmm. symptoms. And they would go to the doctor, and the doctor would say they couldn't find anything wrong with them. They actually they're going to put them on a pill, but there's not anything the matter with them. And it just means the body is shifting and adjusting to the new frequency. And you just have to allow it to do it. And then it straightens out, and you're okay again for a few days few months or something. But people have told me they didn't know what this was and now it helps them to understand. Right. So your diets are changing. If people realize that. Yeah. In order to move with the new earth, the body has to become lighter. Yes. It can happen by eating heavy foods and heavy meats. They have told me the best diet is live foods. Fresh fruits and vegetables. You mean raw? Organic if possible. Yes, live foods. Raw foods, yeah. Mm, interesting. That helps to raise the vibration. Yes, because otherwise the heavy foods hold you down and make you heavy. Yeah. Uh, you can eat some meat, some fish, fish and chicken, but not the heavy beef and pork. That's what holds the body down. And you begin to notice you won't even want those things. You, your diet is changing, and you will want the other foods. And to stay away from sugar as much as possible, and to drink lots and lots of water. They said the value of water is beyond belief. You have no idea how important water is. Is water going to evolve too? The quality Every of water are going to be more dynamized and uh, change, uh, be higher in frequency too? Everything is changing. But these are the things people will notice. And as we go through this, uh, you'll get to the point where you want to eat uh, liquids right. and not other food. And I've had people email me after I've been on the radio, and they'll say, I wonder why I keep wanting to eat smoothies now instead of solid food. Mm -hmm. We're going for liquid. Then after, I don't know how long it'll take, but after we do get into the new world and everything settles down, you eventually won't want to eat anything at all. You'll be living off of life. But this could take a long time because the right. body is, is so used to food. Yeah. But, and the food will be different, too, in the new world. I guess that's another of our addictions that holds us down. Mm -hmm. Because the body has to change. Yeah. That's what I wanted to ask you is because uh, I've interviewed John Vallow and he's saying that our, our body will physically change and evolve, like we're, we're becoming taller and, and maybe even our, our, our uh, front head will be slightly different. Do you believe no. in that? No, no, no. We'll You'll see. have the same body you have right now. Okay. People have asked me, do I have to die to go to the new world? No, you don't. Uh -huh. You will the body you have right now, that's the body you will take with you. And then after you're over there for a while, years maybe, the body will begin to change and it will eventually turn into a being of light. But the body isn't going to change right away. Okay. And some people say they begin, you might start to glow, you might to feel this inner energy, but you're going to have the same body you all have right now. But, but you have the energy of a 20-year-old, so they want to keep you here, huh? don't they? I mean, are we going to live longer? <laughs> yes. This is the thing. You won't have any, no illness, no sickness. That will all be done away with. And, you know, like the ETs, they live as long as they want. They only die when they decide to die, and that's the way it will be in the future. We'll be the same way. Amazing. When we decide time, we go. Well, why do you think they chose you? I don't know if they chose me or not. I've been doing this so long and I've evolved this. Well, one time they did tell me you're our PR person because they want to let people know, especially with the ETs, that they're not negative. But um, 
I just have a desire for this. I have a curiosity. I want to know. I want to know everything. <laughs> so, okay, if you want to know everything, we're going to give you tons of information. They told me one time, why tell just anyone? Tell someone who will do something with it. And that's why they wanted me to write about it. And then I began lecturing on it about 25 years ago, traveling all over the world, and I've been doing that ever since. Now we've created 15 books and more are coming. When I started out, there was no New Age, no New Age stores, no, nobody knew what reincarnation was. So I've watched it evolve, and I've seen how the people are becoming more open and aware of what's happening now. The big changes are coming. And I'm glad I've been at the forefront to see it all change. And my publishing company is growing tremendously because of the interest now in the metaphysical books and the teachings, and uh, people really are opening their minds. It's time. It's time. This is the awakening. The veil is spinning. We're beginning to see why we're really here. Now, some are going to still be stuck in the old way. That's okay. If they're still stuck in the negativity, if they want to stay on the wheel of karma, that's their choice. They said eventually everybody's going to get to the new earth. Some will just take longer than others. But if you don't want to stay with the negativity in the old earth, then you have to get rid of the karma, get rid of fear, let light and love into your life, and you'll see tremendous changes. You can have anything you want in your life. Nothing is impossible. There are no limitations. The mind is extremely powerful. That's why I work with so much with the illness, because you make yourself sick. Nobody else does it but you. Mm -hmm. And if the mind is powerful enough to make yourself sick and create an illness, it's also powerful enough to heal you when we find out, why did I do this to myself? So if the mind is that powerful, it can create anything you want. Anything in your life. It's all up to you. It's all up to the person. Mm -hmm. Through our thoughts and through our emotions and what we put out, we're creating our reality. Thoughts are things. And you learn how to direct your thoughts and what you want and aim at what you want. Anything is possible. I see it all the time in my work, so I know it's possible. Tell us about the healing and the, what you call the therapies of the future that you're developing and instructing people on how to do it too. It's what I'm doing with my classes now. I am teaching this all over the world. I just gave a class in London and I gave one in the south of France. And in a few more weeks, I'll be going to Singapore, uh, five or six cities in Australia, and then uh, a class in New Zealand. And we have large numbers of people in Australia that are taking the class. And I give classes all over the United States. So this is what I've found. You make yourself sick. So in this work, we find out why. Why did I do this to myself? And, of course, the conscious mind doesn't know. I said it's the stupidest part of the human being. It doesn't know anything. So we remove that and get to this other part. We can find out the cause of the illness. Often it goes back to past lives. Sometimes it goes into the uh, karmic associations in this life, the mother, the father, that have made contracts with and all the, the illness is caused by these things. So we find sometimes it's the way they died in another lifetime, some kind of a traumatic situation, and they carry that forward into this life and create illnesses and phobias and allergies and all kinds of things. But once we find the cause and we understand it, it goes away. Mm -hmm. Because there's no need for it anymore. The screen is doing funny things. <laughs> Coming up with I icon. <laughs> well, I appreciate, I appreciate that you're doing this through Skype because I know this is not uh, this is not something you're used to. So I, I mean, I know you're always open to new things. So that's that's cool. That's cool because this is part of sharing the information, as you said, the internet. But um, 
So regarding those healing and those miraculous healing, you, you've seen some, like, it's instant? Oh, it's instant, yes. As soon as it, if you find out the cause, it goes away. Why not? It's just your body trying to give you a message. And if you once you understand the message, why should your body keep trying to give it to you again? Right. So once you understand it, it goes away. And you got to understand, I don't do it. They do it. This, this force that I work with is the one that does the healing. I don't do it. And of course, the person has to be willing. You know, there's lots of people that really don't want to be well. Yeah. Enjoy being sick. You all know people like that. Yeah. that uh, they get attention if they're sick. Yeah. You take their illness away, you, they don't have anything. Those kind of people... Oh, it, but you can't help them because they have to first help themselves. So all I do is I contact this other part, we find out why it happened, why they developed the problem, and once you understand it, then it goes away. Mm -hmm. It's knowledge is what it is. Extraordinary. Well, yeah. Well, I'll have to come and see you for my Rosa Shia then. Even if it's a small disease, it's very embarrassing when you're in front of the camera to have redness all over my face. It's something I'm not able to cure on my own, so... so you look beautiful. What, well, what I you... have it with makeup on, but I have, like, uh, redness everywhere on my face. And I had to take antibiotics for the past three months, and now it's coming back. It's so stressful. <laughs> Antibiotics are not good. I know, but I was it was it came it was so bad that I had to so right now it healed a little bit, but you know, I'm in front of the camera and and of course the disease chose to be there, so mm -hmm. don't you see why? Don't you understand why? Well to love and accept myself I guess the way I am, or so that I really see it. You're worried about what people are going to think and how they're going to see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody would. I mean, it's natural. I, I don't like the way I look in front of the camera either. But the, you, people come in and tell me their symptoms, and you know right away what's going on in their life because the body doesn't lie. It always says the same thing each time. You, this will go away as soon as you become more comfortable with the camera and people looking at you. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I bet you probably had a problem, even as teenagers, of thinking you didn't look pretty or that yeah, people... Yeah, all the time I always had issues with weight and uh, being too tall. Like, I'm six foot tall, so in France, I, I, I grew up in France, and it was I felt like a monster, you know? Okay. I felt like abnormal. So you've always had that in the back of your mind, what are people going to think of me when they look at me? Yeah. You haven't been doing this, this with the sky very long, have you? Yes, I have, and I've been doing for six years now, but I, I fight my shyness all the time because my mission to distribute this information is much more important. So I am uh, I do this with a camera. I couldn't do this in front of a public and an audience. I'm way too shy. Well, I had to overcome it all. You did? Me, I had to overcome more than you could possibly imagine. And I now I speak before hundreds and hundreds of people. Wow. I had to fight it in the beginning, too. There's a lot of things I had to overcome. But that's all it is. You're just you're worried about what people are going to think of you and how they're going to view you. Yeah. And you're just very beautiful. You don't have to worry about it. And you have a lot of talent. And once you understand that, this will all go away. Mm. Mm. Okay. I guess you might say you're trying to validate your peers. <laughs> right. Is that yeah. That would make That's sense. That's how the conscious mind does. I've got to make something like this so that it will validate that I people are staring at me and they don't like what I look like. They see you have to create something. Look how powerful the mind is. See the goofy things it does? Yeah, really goofy. Mm -hmm. This is what I hear all the time with my work. People come in and they can't see it because they're too too close to it. That they've created these things. But no, yours will go away. Just as soon as you become more comfortable with yourself. Yeah. And comfortable in your own body. 
That's You'll be able to talk in front of people too. Sorry? You'll be able to talk in front of people. Yes, too, I wish because once I liberate myself from this body, I mean that I I, I feel like I, I I do feel there is a, a lot for me to do, you know, and, and to expose all this information. So I feel like once I liberate myself from that and be truly okay with my body, I'm just gonna oh my god, there's gonna be so much love and so much, you know, oh it's just gonna be amazing a wave of joy and love, you know. But it won't happen when you liberate yourself from the body. You have to come to terms with your body yeah. and understand what it's trying to tell you. Then you can do it. Because I don't. I know a lot of famous people. They can't get up in front of people. They have ways they have to prepare themselves to be able to get out there on that stage and talk to people. Everybody has that problem. It's just a matter of learning how to deal with it and use it. And if, if, oh, you don't know what I had to overcome. But as you begin to deal with it, it becomes easier. And then after a while, you wonder, why, what, what was I ever afraid of? You see what I mean? Yeah. So tell us to end this interview, because it's already been 50 minutes or so. I knew that it would be hard to, to cut it any shorter than 30 minutes. But this is, this is what people have been requesting from all over the world to hear more of you. And, uh, and so um, what is your last message or something you really want to leave us with today? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. <clears throat> A little hard to say, but we are living in exciting times right now when things are changing. We're becoming more aware of ourselves and the power we have and what we can do to the world. We can change the world. Just by the love is the most important thing of all. Mm -hmm. Love is what it's all about. We have to get rid of fear. You have to get rid of these things that hold you down and to move into this. And I know a lot of people say, oh, that doesn't make any sense. But this is what the whole new world is about. And we're living in exciting times. And I want everyone to think about that. Think about the karma. Let it go. Release it. And move into an exciting new existence you wouldn't even know was out there. You all came for a purpose. You came with a plan. You came to be here at this time. Now you've got to do your part. <laughs> Thank you, Dolores. Thank you so much. It was such a delight. Thank you for asking me. This is a new experience for me. Yeah. I'm just doing it on the phone, but thanks for asking me. Oh, my pleasure. And, and I so appreciate that you went beyond, you know, whatever there was for you to do this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is called the synambulistic level. When you're in that level of trance, the conscious mind isn't there. It can't interfere. Most hypnotists work in the light levels of trance where the person remembers everything when they wake up. And they'll say, well, I made the whole thing up. But you remove that conscious mind. The conscious mind is the stupidest part of the human being. It's the part that doesn't know anything, but yet it thinks it does and it always wants to control everything. But the real knowledge comes from the other part of you. And I have found a way to tap into that. The source of all knowledge. There's nothing you can't find out once you tap into that part. And that's the part I work with. And I find I can reach it by taking the person into the deepest level, getting the stupid conscious mind out of the way, and then we can get the answers to everything. And that's where the healing occurs also. Extraordinary. So what did that reveal? What, what kind of information goes through when you get at that level? Anything you want to know. Access to anything. Because this part, I call it the greatest source of, of power there is. There isn't anything higher. It has the answers to everything. It knows everything. And it knows everything about the person that comes in. There are no secrets. So everything that they want to know as a therapist. Hello, Dolores. Hello there. 
So good to have you today. Really, really exciting. So many people want to hear more of your extraordinary adventures. I want to remind everybody that is watching that you're a true pioneer. You have been doing hypnotherapy for 40 years, over 40 years, past regression life for over 30 years. Before anybody was talking about this, you have been an UFO investigator. You're a counselor, you're a healer, and we're going to speak also about your healing work that is absolutely extraordinary. And you just have received some amazing information from over thousands of people. And I want to discuss that with you and what kind of information you have received by bringing those people to a deep trance. What, what, does, have, what does that have, have revealed to you? Well, I've written 15 books, and I'm working on three more. So I have so much information, I'm going to be writing for a long time, that it just keeps coming. But you see, I've developed a technique of hypnosis that is not like any other method out there. The method that I have found, I've done it myself because when I started 40 years ago, there was none of this being done. So I had to, I guess, invent it as it went along. So I found a way to get the person into the deepest possible level of trance. Yeah. You digest that piece of information, then you get a little more information. Yeah. And so now it's like, I keep thinking there's nothing more they can reveal to me, but they keep saying, oh no, you're only at the very beginning. There's lots more we can tell you. So what does, what does that uh, uh, allow? I mean, how come this is possible now? Is it because our DNA is changing, our vibration are higher? Is it because we're more open, because we hear this more and more? What allows this? What, how can we better get in tune with really what's out there? Everything is changing. We're living in a very exciting time right now. The vibrations and the frequencies of the earth itself are changing. And we have to change to go along with it. So it's affecting all of us. And I think this is, we call it the awakening. Things are beginning to open up. We are beginning to understand more and more. And in the beginning, we couldn't have. It's just day-to-day -day things. But not anymore. Everything is moving very fast right now. You probably have noticed time has speeded up. Everything is changing. So we're able to understand these things more. Maybe the Internet has something to do with it, too. Because when I'm traveling everywhere now, they all say, we just discovered you. I said, yeah, I've been around for 40 years, and you're just now finding out about me. My books have been out for over 20 years. So I think the, you know, everybody has problems. And what they want to know, we can find the answers to, and we can find the cause of the illness. But along the way, when I'm working with these people, also great information comes through. We get metaphysical concepts and theories that I never heard before. That's what I say that I really am is the reporter, the investigator, the researcher of lost knowledge. Because over the years, I've found things are coming to me that no one knows or has been forgotten and lost. And that's why I've written so many books about it. It just comes through the people I'm working with. I don't channel. It doesn't come from me. But the people I work with, the information pours out of them. It's something to help them, but also they'll give me information that the world needs to know. And we're getting more and more concepts that in the past we weren't ready for to understand these things. Now we are finally ready to have it. And it's given piece by piece as you can absorb it and understand it. Otherwise it'd be too much, it'd be too overwhelming. Yeah, I like what you said, it's like giving a, a baby a steak. You know, we can't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the information I've been getting in the last several years, I wouldn't have understood back in the beginning of my work because it wouldn't have made any sense. I would have thrown it all away. So it's always given to you by a little spoonful. Right. If you take internet generation, is having a lot to do with this. But yes, the DNA is being changed because it has to be. In order for us to move with the Earth itself as it shifts into this new dimension and frequency, the dimensions and frequency of our own body have to change in order to move with it. So with this, we have the opening up uh, to receive and understand more information. 
because you don't believe the emails. I get thousands of emails. People finally, they said, finally it all begins to make sense. Uh-huh. It's a very important time we're living in right now. And, and so when, before we get into the new earth and how we can, um, you know, uh, be p- part of this shift or open up and, and uh, how, um, can you tell us more about those regressions and uh, what kind of communication y- you have when you're in that, uh, are you receiving, I hear are you receiving information from ETs? Well, and I've from, done that. And, and from different dimensions? I'm going to explain what I work with first so you'll understand it. People who read my books understand what I do. But no, I worked 25 years on the UFO and the ET phenomenon. I wrote four books on that. That is a different thing altogether. And I found the answers, every answer you could possibly want to know about the 